The first video I made on Medusa is by far the most popular on my channel, and it's a video that solicited a lot of emotion, positive and negative, but it's a story with so many variations, each one changing the way we see the individuals that were involved. The version I told is perhaps the most dramatised, and as a result people have formed opinions and made assumptions without really understanding what the story even symbolises. Today we'll be going over the varying accounts of how Medusa became a Gorgon, and how each story changes our view of the gods involved. But before I begin, I'd like to thank everyone who supported the channel, it means a lot to me. I know it's a tad bit late, but to celebrate reaching 50,000 subscribers, I've been in contact with the good people at StatueKing.com, who've agreed to sponsor this giveaway, and send one of my subscribers this awesome statue of Medusa. If you guys and girls would like to enter the giveaway, then stick around to the end of the video, where I'll be telling you how to do so. The story that I previously told of Medusa was one where she was caught in between the conflict of Poseidon and Athena. Poseidon used Medusa, knowing that taking advantage of one of Athena's priestesses would anger her, and as a result, Medusa was also punished by Athena, who couldn't physically direct her anger towards Poseidon because of his position in the Greek pantheon. It's almost like expecting a child to punish an adult. With Poseidon's status and immense power, he was somewhat untouchable to the vast majority of gods or goddesses. I've seen a lot of people, especially in the comments of the previous video, almost disgusted by the actions of Poseidon and Athena, saying that isn't how gods should behave, and to me that seems like a pretty ridiculous thing to say. Gods and goddesses from mythology all around the world are rarely ever painted as these angelic figures who never do anything wrong. There are of course examples of gods who uphold justice and the law, but if every god was perfect and never made mistakes, they'd have no personality, no defining characteristics, Stories about mythology would not only be extremely boring, but unrelatable. Whether you believe humans were made in the mould of gods, or stories of gods were constructed by humans, then our behaviour would only mirror theirs. One of the main reasons I believe Greek mythology is so popular is because the gods are far from perfect. We have these extremely powerful beings, who face dilemmas of morality similar to the ones we do as humans, and that's something we can relate to, regardless of the shape or form these gods take. You can look at Medusa's story in a cynical manner, which I've seen a lot of people do. You can blame the ancient Greeks for being misogynistic and promoting rape culture, which is sadly a comment that I've read many times. Or you can take a look at the bigger picture. We don't live in a perfect world. Bad things happen to good people all the time. But just like Medusa, if you don't allow these injustices to shape the type of person you become, the outcome will always be positive. Even after Medusa was killed, her head was used to ward off evil, and she became a symbol of protection. The symbol of Medusa's head was even painted on women's shelters in Greece, to show them that these were places where they could be safe. Another interesting variation of this story, that entirely changes the way you perceive Athena, involves Medusa's curse. When Athena had seen what had happened to Medusa, she turned her into a Gorgon. This is quite often seen as the curse, but in this variation it was more of a gift. Medusa became a Gorgon, so no one could ever take advantage of her in the same way ever again. In this variation of the story, Athena provided Medusa with the means to protect herself, and she goes from being regarded as a villain, being called every name under the sun, to a wise and caring goddess. It's these small variations of stories in Greek mythology that remind us we shouldn't be so quick to judge. Gods and goddesses can quickly go from villain to hero and vice versa. Even the role Poseidon plays in this story can change drastically depending on the interpretation. In some stories Poseidon didn't take advantage of Medusa at all. When Athena saw the two together, she immediately assumed the worst, and turned Medusa into a monster, so nothing like that could ever happen again. There are even stories where Medusa came willingly to Poseidon, and she was punished by Athena for her betrayal accordingly. If you find yourself disliking the gods in Greek mythology, or even other mythologies, because you don't consider their behaviour to be godlike, and that's most likely because what you're seeing is a reflection of our own attitudes and behaviour as humans. To somewhat summarise what's been said in this video, if you want to enjoy mythology, especially Greek mythology, then you need to remove the gods from this moral pedestal and accept that controversy, be it good or bad, will always be a part of storytelling, because it's a part of everyday life. Every movie and film has a problem that needs to be fixed, something bad that happens that the entire movie is shaped around, if we remove this problem and pretend that every person is good and just, then like mythology, movies would soon cease to exist. I hope everyone enjoyed today's video. For those of you guys who stuck around, waiting to hear about the giveaway, we're going to go over that right now. 
So the fantastic people over at StatueKing.com have agreed to sponsor this video and send one of my subscribers this statue of Medusa. They have previously sent me a statue of Odin, which I absolutely love, and I'll leave a link in the description for you guys to check out their website. They sell a host of mythology related statues as well as other things, and shipping to anywhere in the United States is free. Now the giveaway sadly will only be available to residents of the United States. For those of you who don't live in America, I'll be trying to do a separate giveaway at another time, but please don't enter if you don't live in the US because the statue won't be sent to you. To enter the giveaway, all you guys have to do is leave a comment as you normally would, but end the comment with hashtag Medusa, and a week from now, I'll be choosing the winner at random. Make sure if you enter the giveaway, you have your YouTube messages enabled, so I can contact you and ask for a shipping address. I'll also be announcing the winner on Twitter, so if you guys would like to know who won, you can follow me over there, there'll be a link in the description below. If you do like the look of any of these statues you've seen today, then feel free to check out StatueKing.com. Their statues make really good gifts, and they look amazing on a desktop or a mantelpiece. I wish all of you guys the best of luck with the giveaway, and as always, I've been your host, Mythology and Fiction Explained.